Once again, basketball fans to Eastridge. Ken Hall along with Chuck Scoble and Wayne Fugit. And we're here for the boys 59th district championship game. It'll be the host of the tournament, the East Ridge Warriors, taking on the Shelby Valley Wildcats in what should be a very good ball game. These two teams have met uh, twice earlier this year. Uh, both times, Shelby Valley won it by three points, the last one being an overtime game. So, uh, Chuck, should be a great matchup. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. This place is just electrified with excitement tonight. A packed house, got people hanging from the railing all over the place down here, Ken. This is what uh, Kentucky High School basketball is all about. Right, uh, we're uh, getting the starting lineups now, so first it'll be Shelby Valley. Starting at center for Shelby Valley, a senior number 44, Phillip Akers. Starting at one forward, a senior number 32, Paul Terry Fleming. Starting at one guard, a sophomore number 14, Seth Kaiser. The other guard, a sophomore, number 22, Patrick Tackett. And uh, rounding out the starting five, a sophomore, number 33, Kelsey Friend. So you've got Kelsey Friend, Philip Akers, Paul Terry Fleming, Seth Kaiser, and Patrick Tackett. And starting five for Rodney Rose, the Shelby Valley Wildcats. City and uh, all these other players that played guards at the previous school, except Robbie Spears. Uh, of course, uh, first year coach uh, James Hurley, this is his first head coaching job, and I'll tell you, he's done a great job, Chuck, bringing this program along. He loves the game, he loves the kids, and he, and he has a lot of fun. He's a high energy kind of guy and uh, likes to press, likes to shoot the threes. Uh, he's made basketball fun to watch down here, and his team's been pretty exciting. Uh, as well, and they've had a great first year. Yes, they have. Of course, Shelby Valley, coached by Rodney Rowe, he's been uh, been in the business a long time, a long time assistant to uh, Bobby Osborne at uh, Virgie and, and uh, early years of Shelby Valley, and has been head coach for several years, and does, does a tremendous job, led his team to the regional championship last year. Well, we're ready to get this one underway, and with all your play-by-play -play of this game, Ken Hall. Thank you, Chuck. As the ball batted around, and T.R. Atkins comes up with it for Eastridge. On the drive, pulls up. No good, and we've got a blocking foul going against Seth, Seth Kaiser. Be his first, team's first. Atkins missed the shot off the glass. We'll go to the line. Atkins will have two shots. He hits the first one. Hell, nobody down here fired up at all tonight, are they, Ken? Oh, both sides are rocking. Every time he, their, their team touches the ball, like half this gym erupts. When they score, they get even louder. Second one comes off, but T.R. Atkins gets his own rebound, puts it up, no good. Ball batted out deep to Paul Fleming. 
He gets it down court to Kaiser. Ahead to Phillip Akers. Akers goes up. No good. Kelsey Friend rebounds it, puts it up and in. Shelby Valley up now, two to one. Down court quickly. Belcher drives the baseline. And we're going to have another foul on the Wildcats. Well, Eastridge definitely wanting to get this thing up tempo early. As Spears inbounds it to Aaron Branham in the corner. Out to Brandon Ratliff. Ratliff, he's going to drive with it all the way. Swatted out of bounds by Kelsey Friend. And Eastridge will have the ball under their own basket. Branham inbounded. He fires it out deep to Robbie Spears. Over to Matt Belcher. Belcher's going to drive. He gets it off to T.R. Atkins down the lane. Beautiful and shot. They're going to wave it off. Said he walked before the shot. And the ball back over to Shelby Valley. Kaiser inbounds it to Akers. And he throws it away. Trying to throw it back to Kaiser as Kaiser made a cut. As the full court pressure pays off early here for Eastridge. Break for Eastridge. They're going to get to inbound it underneath their own goal. Ball inbounded to Spears. Out deep to Belcher. Belcher pulls up at the free throw line and got it. Nice shot by Matt Belcher. Eastridge back on top. Three to two. Kelsey Friend throws it in front court to Patrick Tackett. Back to Friend. Over to Kaiser. He hits Friend breaking down the lane, and Friend is fouled as Brandon Ratliff reaches in. I mean, Ratliff's first, team's first. Ratliff's got a tough assignment. He's given away about three, four inches on uh, Kelsey Friend Jr., and uh, Friend took him right to the hole that time. Friend will have two shots. First one up and good. Friend, second shot on the way, and it's good. Shelby Valley got a great young nucleus, Ken. They've got uh, Kaiser, Friend, and Patrick Tackett all coming back next year. Oh, they're all sophomores. They're, they're one of the youngest teams in the region. Pass inside. Belcher goes up on the baseline. It rolls off. Kelsey Friend up for the rebound. It's taken away by Ratliff. Ratliff goes up, in and out, and back in. And got a timeout on the court. 6.25 to go in the first quarter. And no, there was no timeout there. There's a uh, miscommunication there. Rodney says, I don't want a timeout this early. Eastridge up 5-4. to four. They're set up in full court pressure. It's Kaiser to inbound it. Gets it into Friend. Back over to Kaiser. Kaiser back to Friend. He fires it in front court to tack it. Here's Fleming open and wide open underneath. Phillip Akers puts it up and in. Six to five now. Shelby Valley back on top. As changing leads every trip down the floor so far. Branham in the corner. Gets it into Spears. It's knocked loose by Tackett. Here goes Belcher on the drive with it. Knocked out of bounds by Akers. It'll be Eastridge ball. Well, I tell you, these fans are into this one early, aren't they, Chuck? They are. They're, they're having a big old time. And underneath, good position and an easy one for Matt Belcher. Eastridge back on top, 7-6. to six. Here's Fleming with it. Down low to Akers. He gets inside, missed an easy one, follows it up, no good. Tips it again, no good. And we've got a foul. Going against Kelsey's friend, I believe. That's no, it's on Acres. It's going to be on Acres. Uh, he missed two close-in shots and was hustling to get the third and got called for over the back, I think. Aaron Branham brings it up. Branham drives, feeds it underneath the Spears, and his shot blocked. Kelsey Friend takes it away from him. Second block for Kelsey this game. And we're going to have a foul on Aaron Branham. Be his first, team second. I tell you, 
Kelsey friend, uh, he, he's not a center. He plays forward, but he's got those long arms, and he blocks a lot of shots. Uh, does a good job defensively. I wouldn't be surprised if he's not the leading shot blocker in the region. Akers with it. Out to Fleming. Fleming drives. Nice move. Spins. And it comes off, but he draws the foul. It'll be on Matt Belcher, number 20. His first. Team's third. Each team with three fouls now. Fleming's free throw up and good. We're all tied up. 7 7. 5 9 to go in the first quarter. Second shot by Fleming is good. Shelby Valley back on top, eight to seven. And you know, Chuck, the biggest lead of the night has been one point as they've traded uh, back and forth since it was one nothing Eastridge. Here's Spears out deep with it. Looking for help. He hits Ratliff on the break. Ratliff gets free, puts it up. No good. Kelsey Friend, another rebound. Boy, Friend really working hard so far tonight. And down court, Branham knocks Tackett to the floor and comes away with the ball. And we've got another foul going against Shelby Valley. And we'll be on Seth Kaiser, his second, team's third, fourth, excuse me. Kaiser with two early ones, 437 still to play in the first quarter. Ball in the corner to Branham. Branham drives, kicks it out deep. Here's T.R. Atkins for three. No good. Friend up high for another rebound. And down court, Phillip Akers beats everybody down and missed the layup. Aaron Branham goes after it. He's on the run out. Behind the back dribble. Drives down the lane, puts it up. Oh! Great move by Branham, but it came out. Kaiser, Fleming in the corner for three. And he hits it. That's Paul Fleming. Fleming, one of the better shoot shooters in the 15th region. He's had a tremendous senior season, leading the Wildcats in scoring this year. Kelly Valley up now 11 to 8. Aaron Branham in the front court. Over to Belcher. Belcher spins, drives, off the Spears for a short one. It comes off. Patrick Tackett pulls it down, gets it to Kaiser. Kaiser ahead, Kelsey Friend for three. And it rolls off. Akers rebounds it, puts it up and in. Phillip Akers with the bucket, and Shelby Valley goes up 13 to 7. Coach uh, James Hurley wants a 30 second timeout. We'll keep it right here, Chuck. But boy, well, I'll tell you, it's some pace here. So what's far. killing Eastridge right now, Ken, is the rebound. And Shelby Valley started this game out out rebounding them nine to two. Uh, Eastridge has had some good looks, but they're not getting second tries at it. Shelby Valley on their end is getting second chances. Yes, they are. And uh, Kelsey Friend is basically just dominating the boards out there. He's all over the glass. I think both times when Spears has gone up for shots, there's not been any white shirts under the basket. Uh, so if he misses, uh, Shelby Valley's been pulling those rebounds. Uh, Akers and uh, Friend both, and also uh, Patrick Tackett doing a good job on the boards as well. We've got 3.36 left here in the first quarter. It's, uh, Shelby Valley up by six now, 13 to seven. As Aaron Branham will bring it up to court for the Warriors of East Woods. He drives over on the right side. There's Belcher in the corner. He drives, feeds it off to Spears, and Spears has it blocked by Akers. In goes Belcher with the left hand. What a shot by Matt Belcher. Nice move to shield the defender away from the ball. 13 to nine now. Patrick Tackett having all kinds of trouble, and he's gonna be called for step. Checking in for uh, East Ridge, Matt McCurry, number three. Giving uh, Brandon Ratliff a breather. Branham in the front court. He gets through the defense down the lane, puts it up, and we're going to have a blocking foul on Phillip Akers. Akers leaning in to his second, team's fifth. 
Brennan, not a great shooter, Ken, but he's uh, got good quickness, kind of a slasher to the basket, you know, oh, can really creates some problems for a defense, either by dishing it off when he gets into the lane or going for the shot. Oh, he has tremendous quickness. He hits the first one. It's 13-10 now. Number 10, Brandon Bevins in the game. Free throw up. This one comes off. Paul Fleming with the rebound. Patrick Tackett in the front court. Gets it over to Fleming. Out deep to Patrick Tackett. And we've got a foul. Gonna be on Will, Atkins. Will Atkins. That's what I thought. He just checked in. It's his first. Four team fouls now on Eastridge. Shelby Valley with five. Friend inbound it. Fires it underneath to Patrick Tackett, and he's fouled as he goes up. Yeah, Robbie Spears got him. Uh, Tackett just got loose from the defender, and well, that was a good good pass from Friend. He floated it up over the defender. Spears had to come over there and cut him off. Patrick Tackett's first trip to the line. It's in and out and back in. Shelby Valley so far a perfect five for five from the charity stripe, and they're normally a pretty good free throw shooting team. And make it six for six as Tackett hits the second one. Shelby Valley up by five now, 15 to 10, 235 to play in the first quarter. Aaron Branham in the front court. Drives on Tackett, backs it out to Bevins. And Patrick Tackett foul. blocking foul, his first team sixth. Next one will put Eastridge in the bonus, and we've still got 227 to play in the first quarter. Ball into Spears. Eckers backs off. He takes a 17-footer off the glass. No good. And Patrick Tackett up high for the rebound. He's being pressured. Gets it out to Friend. Friend a long pass down court to Fleming. Fleming holds it up. Tackett underneath. Friend goes up off the glass. Got it. Well, I'll tell you, Kelsey Friend has come to play tonight. Jack. He's doing everything for these Wildcats. Yeah, he's got a good soft touch uh, with the basketball, too, for a bigger guy. 17-10 now. The Wildcats up by seven. Spears thought about it. He gets it out deep to Brandon Be or to Matt McCurry, excuse me. Over to Branham. Branham over to Spears. Spears was on the baseline. Bevins drives and he traveled with it. 134 to go. Turnover on East Ridge. How many is that? Two. Two. Ball inbounded to Fleming. Back to Kaiser. Head to Fleming. Fleming drives. Nice speed off to Akers. He's wide open underneath for an easy layup. Well, the press is not working. Valley's had two or three just easy layups uh, after they've gotten the ball down the floor. 19 to 10 now. Valley up by nine. There goes Will Adkins with it. Off to Brandon Bevins. And we're going to have a foul going on Patrick Tackett. <laughs> yes. It's his second, so three Shelby Valley players with two fouls apiece. Patrick Tackett, Seth Kaiser, and Phillip Akers. As Ryan Tackett checks in for Patrick Tackett. And that has to be a major concern for Coach Rodney Rowe. As, uh, they don't go as deep on the bench as Eastridge. Eastridge usually runs ten players at you, and uh, Rodney goes six or seven. That's normally it. Free throw by Bevins. Up and good. Eastridge in the bonus here with still a minute 10 to go in the first quarter. Bevins takes his time, puts it up, and it comes off. Kelsey Friend, another rebound. Kaiser in the corner to Ryan Tackett. Back out to Kaiser. And he's going to be called for steps. Drug his pivot foot before he put the ball on the floor. T.R. Atkins back in, replacing Brandon Bevins. 
exactly one minute to go in the quarter. It's 19 to 11. Shelby Valley. T.R. Atkins brings it up slowly. Well, it didn't take James Hurley long to lose that sport coat. He's down to. <laughs> Ratliff with it. Off to Atkins. Atkins over to Belcher. He drives quickly. And shot off. Spears puts it up. It comes off. Ball batted out. McCurry fires it from the free throw line. No good. Blocked. And Fleming with the rebound. Fleming ahead to Kaiser. Kaiser down to Ryan Tackett. Back out deep to Kaiser. Nice feet underneath. Here's Fleming for three. This one's off. And Robbie Spears gets the rebound. Only 10 seconds to go in the quarter. T.R. Atkins. And it's deflected out of bounds by Fleming. 7.7 .7 seconds remaining. Yes, Shelby Valley a substitution. Well, if uh, James Hurley rolls up those sleeves like Johnny Martin, then you know we serious yes. about getting out of business. <laughs> Johnny Martin almost takes the shirt off. Yeah. <laughs> there goes Boucher. Spins, throws it up, and he's fouled. It's going to be Ryan Tackett on the foul. No, it's number five. Boy, Rodney is animated tonight. I wish we had a camera on Rodney Rowe tonight. A shot up by Belcher and good. Gives Belcher seven points in the opening stanza. The second shot on the way, and it comes off, and that'll do it for the first quarter. At the end of one, your score, Shelby Valley, 19, Eastridge, 12. We'll be right back on the Intermountain Sports Network. Hey, look. And welcome back to Eastridge High School. We've completed one quarter, Shelby Valley leading Eastridge, 19 to 12. But the Wildcats in some foul trouble here, Chuck. Yeah, Eastridge uh, keeping the pressure on them, and they've drawn some fouls, just haven't been able to score a whole lot. Akers down low, back to Kaiser. He fakes the three, gets it over to Fleming. Back out to Kaiser. Kaiser to tack it. Fleming in the lane, fakes, spins, gets off the short one. He got it. Nice move in the lane by Paul Fleming, and Shelby Valley up now 21 to 12. T.R. Atkins brings it up for the Warriors. In the corner to Atkins. Back out to Rattler. Matt Belcher with it now. Belcher off to Atkins. Atkins, 18-footer straight away. No good. And Ryan Tackett up for the rebound. Gets it off to Kaiser. Well, if Eastridge is going to keep missing the jump shots, they're going to have to pull some rebounds. They're getting mauled on the boards right now. Here's Fleming off the screen. Cut off. Over to Kaiser. Friend in the corner. He'll take the 18-footer. He buries it. How many points does Friend have already? Cut eight. He's probably got that many rebounds. He's really been all over the glass. Here's Belcher with it. Brandon Rattler for three. It comes off. Akers to the, up for the rebound. And here come the Wildcats leading by 11. Ball deflected. Yes, good job by Brandon Rattler. T.R. Atkins with it on the run. Rattler for three out of the corner. He got it. And it's 23-15 now. Shelby Valley by eight. Exactly six minutes to go in the first half. Kaiser out to friend. Over to Akers. Ryan Tackett. He's open. Takes an 18-footer. It comes off. Rebound by Matt McCurry. And here come the Warriors again. Off to T.R. Adkins. Adkins goes over to Brandon Rattler. Rattler's going to drive. Adkins on the baseline. Gets it out to Rattler. Rattler drives. Move. And he got by with a walk on that I one. think so. 
And Ryan Tackett picks up his second foul. As Rattler kind of lost his footing and scooted there, but no call. Belcher will have two. He hits the first one. Aaron Branham back in the ball game for East Ridge and number 50, Matt Puckett in for the first time. Second shot by Belcher comes off, rebounded by T.R. Atkins. Rattler drives, gives it to Puckett. Puckett back to Rattler. Rattler drives, puts it up. No good, the ball batted, and Ryan Tackett comes out with it. Hits it to Kaiser, down court to Fleming. Fleming drives, over to Friend. He's wide open for three. This one comes off. Matt Belcher on the run out. T.R. Atkins down court, puts it up, got it. And it's 23-18, and Shelby Valley turns it over as it goes off. Seth Kaiser. That's the seventh turnover on Shelby Valley. Patrick Tackett back in for Ryan Tackett. 446 to go in the first half. It's a five-point Shelby Valley lead, 23-18. As Easter is the six unanswered points here. Here's a pass out deep to Puckett. Over to Rattler. Out to Branham. Branham setting up the offense. He drives now, gets through, and he's grabbed. That's going to be Patrick Tackett. It'll be three on him now. As he just checked back in the game on that last clock stop. Tenth probably. team foul, so Eastridge being the double bonus the remainder of the half. He's shooting two with the double bonus, and he hits the first one. Ryan Tackett back in for Patrick Tackett. Well, Eastridge, so far tonight, nobody's hit both free throws. Everybody's hit one out of two as they're shooting 50%, and it continues. Gets a friend, another rebound. Gets it over to Kaiser. Down court, Ryan Tackett takes the shot. Back out deep to Kaiser, over to Fleming. And they float it underneath the friend. He puts it up and in. Nice assist there from Fleming. Here goes Branham on the drive. Underneath, it's blocked by Kelsey Friend. Kaiser on the run out. Gets it over to Ryan Tackett. Back out to Fleming. He drives. Back to Akers. Akers, six-footer. He got it. It rolls in. Well, Eastridge very small up front, and Shelby Valley taking advantage of him with those short shots in the box. 27-19, Shelby Valley up by eight. 3.45 to play in the first half. Brandon Ratliff with it. He gives it off to T.R. Adkins. Adkins back to Branham. Branham over to Brandon Ratliff. Easter is being very patient on this possession. Atkins with it. Branham. Branham so quick. He gets through that defense. And here's Ratliff. Nice pump fake. Puts up another three. This one comes off to Atkins. T.R. Atkins puts it up and in. And it's 27-21 now. Chevy Valley by six. Gets your friend on the drive. Hands it off to Kaiser down the lane. He puts it up and got it. First basket of the night for Seth Kaiser. I believe that was his first shot attempt, too. Yep. 29-21 now. Wildcat leads back to eight. Aaron Branham in front court. Branham over to Belcher. That's a shut off. Fires it cross court to T.R. Adkins. He's going to drive again. In the lane. Puts it up. No good. Phillip Akers up for the rebound. No rebounder at all for Eastridge tonight. Kaiser to friend. He's wide open. And this one comes off. Three-point attempt. 
T.R. Atkins on the run. And what's the call? I think they're going to get Akers, I believe. Yep. That'll be his third, Ken. That is not something Rodney Rowe wants to have happen before halftime, have his senior center in foul trouble. 2-10 to go in the first half. It's 29-21, Shelby Valley. T.R. Atkins back at the line for two. Atkins shot up, and it comes off. Eastridge shooting themselves in the foot. They're only hitting 50% from the line right here in the first half. They've six out of 12 before that shot. T.R. Adkins very patient at the line. He puts it up and good. 29-22 now. Shelby Valley leads it by seven as Eric Bartley, number 15, checks in. Philip Akers is going to take a seat. And we've got a timeout. 2-10 to play in the half. It's 29-22. Shelby Valley on the Intermountain Sports Network. As we're back, Ryan Tackett to inbound the ball. Against full court pressure. Chevy Valley leading by 7, 29-22. 2 5 to go in the first half. Seth Kaiser in the front court over to Ryan Tackett. Chuck your friend comes out deep and gets it. Over to Kaiser. Kaiser holds it up. Now he backs it out, gives it off to Fleming. Back to Kaiser. Kaiser over to Bartley. Bartley underneath. Ryan Tackett was left alone yeah, under there. Yeah, they just let him stay right there, and the defense moved on away from him. And Coach Hurley uh, talking to his team about that. Brandon Bevins gets his first foul called on him. Team six. Ryan Tackett puts up the free throw. It's good. minute 40 seconds remaining in the first half. Tack it with one more. Seth Kaiser goes out. Shot up, no good, and Matt Belcher gets the rebound. In the front court, number 10, Brandon Bevins. Down low to Spears, he spins. And has his shot blocked, but there's gonna be a foul. Kelsey Friend picks up his first. his first. He's about the only starter that doesn't have at least two, isn't he? Robbie Spears looking to break into the scoring call on the night. He's 0 for 3 from uh, the floor so far tonight. Yes, he's short on the free throw. He's got one more. A minute 26 seconds to go in the first half. Spears, second one up and good. 30 to 23. Shelby Valley leading by seven. Ryan Tackett in backcourt. He gets it across the timeline. Drives. Bartley open in the corner for three. It's an air ball. Rebound by Matt Belcher. Belcher in the front court. Feeds it down low to Spears. He spins, puts it up off the glass, no good. Belcher rebounds it, turn around, no good. Cattle underneath, and Eric Bartley comes out with it, and he's fouled. I think they're gonna get Robbie Spears, who got tangled up with him. That'll be Spears' second. And 17 fouls now on East Ridge, so that'll put Shelby Valley on the line for the one plus one. East Ridge with a couple more chances to get the ball in the hole and couldn't do it. He had a couple of good looks inside that time. Only 53 seconds left down half. Bartley with the one plus one. 
Free throw up, and it rolls off. Rebounded by McCurry. Over to Branham. Branham across the timeline. He's going to drive. Gets it in the corner. Here's Brandon Rattle for three. He buries it. And it's 30-26. It's his second tray of the quarter. Kelsey Friend in the front court. We're down now to 27 seconds to go in the half. Fleming closely guarded. Gets it over to Friend. Friend down low. Back to Fleming. He drives. We're down now to 15 seconds. Kelly Valley wanted to take the last shot. Fleming cut off. Out deep to Ryan Tackett. Back to Fleming. Fleming takes an 18-footer. It's short. And a long throw from Rattle. Whoa. Short. And that, that'll do it for the first half. At the end of the first half of play, your score, Shelby Valley, 30, Eastridge, 26. We'll take a break and be back with some halftime stats and comments right here on Eastern Kentucky Sports Leader, the Intermountain Sports Network. And welcome back to Eastridge High School. It's halftime as Shelby Valley leading Eastridge 30 to 26 in the 59th District Championship. And uh, quickly, Chuck, give us the stats. All right, uh, leading the way in scoring for Shelby Valley was Kelsey Friend. He had 10 points. Uh, right behind him, Philip Akers had eight. Paul Terry Fleming had seven. Seth Kaiser and Patrick Tackett with two. Ryan Tackett with one. Shelby Valley, seven out of eight from the charity stripe in the first half. Pulled 18 rebounds and turned the ball over seven times. For Eastridge, they were led in scoring by two people. Brandon Ratliff had eight points, including two three-pointers. Uh, Matt Belcher with eight points. T.R. Atkins had six. Aaron Brandon with two. And uh, Brandon Bevins and Robbie Spears with one apiece. Uh, Eastridge not doing a good job on the line. They went there 16 times and only hit half of them, eight. And uh, that could have really closed the gap just hitting some free throws. They pulled 13 rebounds and turned the ball over twice. Back to the second half play by play, Mr. Ken Hall. Thank you, Chuck. Aaron Brandon in the front court with it as Eastridge has the first possession of the second half. T.R. Atkins swings it over to Brandon Ratliff. He drives, cut off at the Spears. 18-footer, almost went down, came off. Kelsey Friend, another rebound. He's been He's all over the boards. Here's Patrick Tackett underneath to Akers. Akers gets his shot partially blocked by Spears. Good job by Robbie Spears. And here comes Eastridge with it. Down in the corner to Atkins, back out to Branham. He slices through the lane, puts it up, it comes off. Seth Kaiser and Fleming down court quickly, lays it up and in. Paul Terry Fleming with the ball. 32-26, Shelby Valley up by six. Branham with it. Gives it off to Belcher. Belcher drives down the lane now, and he's fouled. Will be on Paul Terry Fleming, his second, team's first. Wendell Wallen just got, about got run over by Matt Belcher there. He was coming down the lane in a hurry. And Belcher at the line for two. First one on the way, good. 32 27. Belcher with one more. He puts it up, and this one comes off. Battle for the rebound. Akers chases it down. Kaiser gets it ahead to Friend, and Friend didn't get it on the floor quick enough. He's called for traveling. Aaron Branham in the front court quickly for Eastridge. Now he slows it down. <laughs> Here's a pass underneath to Spears. He fires out Rattler for three. It comes off. Good rebound inside by Spears. He not nice pump fake, and he puts it up in the end. Gets his first bucket of the night off that rebound. Spears off to a good start here in the second half. On both ends of the court. 32-29 now. Shelby Valley's lead down to three. Seth Kaiser with it. He hands it off to Friend. Friend fakes. 
Gives it back out to Fleming. Fleming on the drive. Spins, puts it up. No good, but he's fouled. Going out first. Uh, like to apologize to Mr. Travis Robinson of Shelby Valley, number five. We didn't have him on our roster that we had here, as he was in there a couple of times in the first half. We haven't Travis seen Robinson. Travis much this year, have we? No, we haven't. He got in here the uh, Wednesday night for a few I minutes. Mean, Prestonsburg had a player the other night they hadn't played all year long, and they pulled a quick one on Pete and Adam down there. I think his number was 33. If Fleming hits both of them. It's 34 29. Shelby Valley up for five. Brandon Ratliff with it. Shelby Valley man to man defense. Ball out deep to Branham. Branham goes over to Belcher. They feed it underneath. Tackett comes across from the weak side and intercepts it. Excellent play by Patrick Tackett. They're trying to go inside the Spears. Tackett to Friend underneath. This is Akers on the move inside, and he's, he's going to be fouled by Spears. That's his third. Robbie Spears cannot get into foul trouble for Eastridge because they don't have anybody that can crash the boards other than Spears. Akers will be at the line for two. His first shot on the way. It's good. Well, unlike Eastridge, Shelby Valley just rolls right along, hitting their free throws. They've only missed one tonight. Well, if takes his time, picks it up, and this one comes off. Rebound, Matt Belcher. I'm going to have to rate you right up there with Danny Van Hoos as far as jinxing these good free throws. <laughs> Every time you start talking about they miss it. And nice drive by T.R. Atkins, and he missed a close one. Down court quickly, Fleming, he's going to drive with it. Goes out to Patrick Tackett for three. It comes off. Nice rebound by Rattler. And Akers knocks it loose. Belcher there to get it. And Phillip Akers blocks the shot, but he also committed the foul. It'll be number four on Phillip. Seeing him take a seat here with that fourth foul. He still got 457 to go in the third quarter. Matt Belcher will be at the line to shoot two. Ryan Tackett at the scorer's table waiting to check in for Aker. Belcher shot up and too hard. I just can't believe Eastridge having this much trouble with free throws. They're missing half of everything they throw up there. And the second one good by Belcher. It's 35-30, Shelby Valley by five. Kelsey Friend will bring it across the timeline, give it over to Fleming. Fleming drives again, cut off. Out to Kaiser, he takes the three. Too hard. Rebound, T.R. Adkins. And Tackett, Patrick Tackett knocks it loose. The ball on the floor. Fleming goes and gets it. Patrick Tackett, two steals here in this quarter. He's a hustler now. He sure is. Out to Kaiser. Over to Fleming. Tackett floats it under to Friend. He gets it, puts it up and in. Nice pass from Patrick Tackett. And good job inside by Friend. 37-30, Chevy Valley's back up by seven. Aaron Branham in the front court. He puts it up from 18, it's short. Ryan Tackett has it knocked loose, Belcher with it. He goes up and puts it in. Nice move in the lane by Belcher. And Coach Rodney Rowe wants a timeout. 3.56 left in the third quarter. It's 37-32 Shelby Valley, a 30-second timeout. We're going to keep it right here and uh, take a minute, Chuck, to uh, thank their sponsors. All right. 59th District sponsors include Appalachian Wireless, the law offices of Van Overhaul and Bartley, Dr. Michael McKinney, the Pikeville Methodist Hospital, Glenn Martin Hammond Law Offices, Keene's Homes, 
Eagle Express, Kent Carter and Mike Lucas, attorney at laws, Adventure Motorsports and Hall and Jones Funeral Home. Want to thank all our great sponsors here because without you, we couldn't be here and we couldn't bring these games to you on Intermountain Sports. That's right. We could be here. We would have had to bought a ticket like everybody yeah, else. Yeah, we'd that. have had to pay for our tickets and our food and everything, wouldn't we? Right, right. Yeah, Shelby Valley with the ball, leading it by five. That's your friend over to Seth Kaiser. Back to friend. Friend fires it down to Ryan Tackett. Tackett back out to Kaiser. Patrick Tackett with it. Now he's going to drive. Kicks it over to Tackett. Here's Fleming for three. He comes off. Ryan Tackett inside for the rebound. Missed a short one. And coming out with it, McCurry. And he's fouled by Tackett. Ryan Tackett went inside, got a fine rebound there, and then missed the uh, putback. Now it's good that that call was on Ryan Tackett rather than Patrick, because Patrick already had three. That's just the second on Ryan. 3.20 to play in the third quarter. Jenny Valley up by five. Matt Belcher with the ball for the Warriors. Over to Matt McCurry. Out deep to Rattler. Brandon Rattler drives, cut off, throws it back to McCurry, and it's going to be an over and back. Eastridge basically with a five guard lineup in there. Got a small lineup in there against Shelby Valley right now. They should be quick. They should be able to handle the ball. And they should be able to shoot, but uh, no big guys in there right now for the Warriors to pull rebounds. Seth Kaiser across the line. Over to Tackett. Ryan Tackett on the drive. Gets it to Kaiser. Out to Fleming. Back over to Kaiser. Patrick Tackett going inside again to Friend, and he puts it up and in. Another assist to Patrick Tackett. That's just too much of a mismatch. Friend's got about three or four inches and some weight on uh, Matt Belcher, and he's been able to push him off and get the ball into the hole. And a great drive by Aaron Branham. Took it to the goal, put it up and in. Here's a pass down to Fleming. Fires it underneath Ryan Tackett. Goes up, missed it, got it back. He got whacked across the head, but no call. Here goes Brandon Rattler. T.R. Atkins for three. No good. Rebound Kelsey Friend. He gets it over to Kaiser. Down court to Fleming. Fleming drives. Kaiser breaking to the bucket, lays it up and in. Good job by Kaiser down the lane. A fine feed from Paul Terry Fleming. 41-34, Shelby Valley up by seven. 155 to play in the third quarter. Branham driving again. He gets through and puts it up and in. I'll tell you, Chuck, he's too quick for anybody on this court to stay with him, I believe. Patrick Tackett down court quickly. Ryan Tackett, he goes in, puts it up and in, and gets the foul. Poor defense and getting back on defense by Eastridge that time. Uh, Tackett wide open. And Tackett will go to the line to try and complete the three-point play. The uh, foul there goes against uh, T.R. Adkins, his second. No, they change it now. It's one number 24, Brandon Rattler. Ryan Tackett, one shot. Puts it up, and it rims out. Kelsey Friend rebounds it. Patrick Tackett gets it, puts it up and in. And Shelby Valley now up by nine, 45-36. Aaron Branham in the front court. Branham drives. Puckett in the game, Matt Puckett drives. Kicks it out to Belcher. Quick move, 14-footer. No good, and Sam Kaiser up for the rebound. He throws it away, picked off by Rattler. Rattler pulls up in the lane, puts it up and in. 45-38. Kaiser in back court against the pressure. Over to Patrick Tackett. Head to Friend. Friend back to Patrick Tackett. He takes it in, puts it up. No good. And Matt Puckett with the rebound. Puts it over to Branham. We're inside a minute to go in the third quarter. Branham taking it to the goal and... Gonna have a blocking foul on the Wildcats. Be on Ryan Tackett, it'll be his third. 40 
with seven seconds to go in the quarter. Shelby Valley leading by seven, 45-38. As Robbie Spears back in the game now will inbound the ball. And they try to go back to Spears. Patrick Tackett once again with a good defensive play. Knocks it out of bounds. Branham to inbound it. And here's Spears getting it. Nice fake. Goes up. And oh. off. Spears has had several good looks tonight. Ball just won't stay down for him. They got Patrick Tackett again. I believe that'll be his, his fourth. fourth. Yeah, he and Philip Akers both with four. Spears needs to do something at the line here. He has struggled from the field. As he hits the first one. Robbie Spears. He puts it up. Well short on this one, but Matt Belcher with it. He goes up. And oh. goes up. Spears rebounds it, puts it up. Got it, and he's fouled. Robbie Spears really working hard inside. <laughs> Only 35 seconds to go in the third quarter. Spears, one shot. It's up. And it comes off. Kelsey Friend with the rebound. And away from the ball, we've got a push. Matt Belcher, I believe, on the call. That'll be his second. Thirty-three seconds to go in the quarter. Full court pressure by the Warriors. Friend drives with it. Gets it over to Kaiser. Head to Ryan Tackett. He hits Friend. Nice pass, and Friend lays it up and in. Kelsey's been killing them. He's got the size advantage inside. He just weaves toward the hole and takes it up and in. He's got six in the quarter. 47-41, Shelby Valley. As Easter is going for the last shot of the third quarter here. Eight seconds remaining. Here's Branham going to take it. And Ryan Tackett reaches in. That'll be four on him. And that'll put Eastridge in the bonus. Shelby Valley with all kinds of foul trouble out here. Could be a big problem going into that fourth period, uh, it's, Ken. Three it's, players it's, it's. with four fouls. Random with two. First one up. And it comes off. Eastridge's foul shooting woes continue tonight. Only trailing by six. They uh, could be leading it if they were shooting a foul. Free throws halfway decent. They've missed 13 free throws. Second one good. It's 47-42. Three seconds remaining in the quarter. Kaiser over to Fleming. He throws it up, but... The horn sounds before he gets it off. So at the end, all three quarters, who scores? Shelby Valley, 47. Eastridge, 42. We'll be right back with fourth quarter action here on the Intermountain Sports Network. Welcome back. 47-42. Shelby Valley over Eastridge going into this fourth and final period of play. And with the... Exciting finish to this 59th district championship play the play, Mr. Ken Hall. Thank you, Chuck. As Chevy Valley with possession to start the fourth quarter. Seth Kaiser with it. Over to Fleming. Back out to Friend. He feeds it underneath to Patrick Tackett. He brings it out. Out deep to Fleming. Fleming's going to drive. Spins. Out to Ryan Tackett. Paul Fleming with it. Floats it underneath for Friend. He comes up with it somehow and puts it up and in. Good hands Great that time. Hands the ball got batted around. Good hands, my friend. And it's 49-42. Branham into front court. Kelsey with 18 tonight. Aaron Branham drives. Gets it out to T.R. Adkins. Off to Brandon Rattler. 
Branham with it now. Close to guarded by Kaiser. Gets it over to Belcher. Rattler. Here goes Belcher down the lane. Puts it up and in. Nice drive by Matt Belcher. Here's Patrick Tackett in front court. Hands it off to Kaiser. 49-44. Shelby Valley by five. Just underway here in the fourth quarter. Ryan Tackett. Got to Patrick Tackett. There's another pass underneath the friend, and he's fouled. Matt Belcher. Matt Belcher got him. That'll be his third. Hell, Belcher just not able to handle Kelsey's size inside. Six forty-four left in the ball game. Both teams will advance to regional tournament action next week. Friend missed the first one. Friend second one on the way, and it comes off. Rebound, T.R. Atkins. Down court quickly, Belcher with it. Here he goes in the lane, and it's blocked out of bounds by Kelsey Friend. I think that's Kelsey's third or fourth block tonight. I've got Shelby down. Shelby Valley down for four blocks as a team. Here's a pass in to Spears. Back to Branham. He gets it out to Rattler. Goes underneath to Spears. He fakes. Goes up and draws the foul on Friend. Good pump fake there by Robbie Spears. Be the third on Kelsey Friend. Spears just not having any luck connecting on the shots, Ken. He's getting some good looks and making some nice moves. He's really worked hard here in this second half. Free throw with Spears up and good. 49-45. Well, now will he be the first East Ridge player in this ball game to hit two out of two from the line? As he aims out to hit the second one. And it rolls in. Broke the jinx finally. 49-46. It's a three-point ball game. Shelby Valley leading. There's a pass ahead to Friend. And Friend double dribbled. Six twenty-two left in the ball game. As Eastridge could tie it with a three. Here's Branham. He's going to take the three. He got it. We're all tied well. up. Friend throws it down court to Ryan Tackett, and we had a timeout, Shelby Valley. As the East Ridge Warriors come storming back, it's a full timeout. We'll take a break. It's 49-49 on the Intermountain Sports Network. Welcome back here to Eastridge. 602 left in the ball game. We've got a brand new ball game all tied up. 49 apiece. Shelby Valley and Eastridge. And I know some of the other districts had some exciting finals tonight, but I can't imagine one that's been any better than this one, Ken. No, uh, it has been a good one, and just what we expected. As these two teams, a uh, couple of great matchups during the record season, and both of them really going at it here tonight. As we go inside six minutes to play, all tied up. Kaiser finds Tackett underneath to Akers. Akers pump fake, puts it up and in. Well, Akers had four fouls on him. They held him out, and as soon as he comes back in, he makes a score. And a good job by Seth Kaiser as he ties up Aaron Branham. Possession stays with Eastridge. As Matt Belcher will inbound it. Gets it in to Spears. Back out to Branham. There's Ratliff with it. Looking for Spears down low. Nice feature to him. He's triple team. Spins. Gets loose. And that's going to do it for Aker. Gets, gets the basket and draws the foul. Be off. And Spears ties. 
ties it up. 51 51. That's it for Philip Akers. That's his fifth foul. He finishes with 11. As Coach Hurley calls his team over to the bench. And I don't think they took a time out here. You've got one of player fouls out. You've got one minute to decide who you're going to uh, put in the game. And uh, I think they're just taking advantage of that to go to the bench, talk to their respective coaches. Akers didn't stay in long, just came back in, did get a bucket on the offensive end, but his first trip down the court on the defensive end, he fouls out. Well, I know that's probably an, uh, uh, one of the strategies of Eastridge is to go after Akers and some of these guys that's got fouls. The Eastridge has been getting beaten on the boards, and if they can get any of those big guys out of there or get them into foul trouble, it just evens things out underneath for them a little bit better because Robbie Spears is really the only guy that can match up physically inside with Shelby Valley. Spears at the line, puts it up, and got it. Eastridge on top, 52-51. This is their first lead since early in the ball game. Here's Fleming in front court. He's going to take it to the goal, puts it up, and got it. Nice shot by Fleming. Shelby Valley back on top, 53-52. Here comes Aaron Branham. 5-10 to go in the game. T.R. Adkins with it. Over to Belcher. Belcher very patient. They're looking inside for Spears again. Now they go across to Adkins. T.R. Adkins drives down the lane. His shot blocked. And Seth Kaiser comes out with it. Fifth Nine block seven. tonight by Shelby Valley. Kaiser with it. Kelsey Friend out deep now with it. Gives it back to Kaiser. Fleming breaks out. There goes Fleming on the drive. Back to Kaiser. Shelby Valley being very patient here. Friend. He's going all the way underneath. Up with the left hand, no good, but he's fouled. Spears got him. That'll be his fourth. So Robbie Spears in danger of fouling out of this one. Brand will be at the line for two. First one on the way, it's no good. Kelsey struggling at the line here in the second half. Brand puts it up. And he got the second one. 54-52, Shelby Valley. Matt McCurry checks in the ball game for Robbie Spears. As Spears goes out with those four fouls. Four minutes, 12 seconds to go in the ball game. It's a two-point Shelby Valley lead. Aaron Branham, head of the key. He drives with it. Over to Adkins. To our Adkins. Here goes Branham. McCurry for three out of the corner. No good. And McCurry gets the deflected ball. Here goes Rattler. Belcher, nice move, drives, puts it up off the glass. Two oh, and Seth that Kaiser gets fouled. Be four on Matt Belcher if that's on him. It is. Had to put Shelby Valley in the one and one. Belcher made a fine move there. Uh, got up in the air, put it off the glass nicely. Came out. Kaiser will be at the line to shoot one plus one. He hits the first one. 55 52. Second one on the way, it comes off. Matt Belcher up for the rebound. Here goes Aaron Branham in a hurry. Over to Brandon Ralph. he drives. Back out to Belcher. T.R. Atkins for three. It's Not off. even close. Matt McCurry gets it and puts it up and in. Down court quickly, Paul Fleming takes it to the goal, puts it up, got it. 57-54, Shelby Valley back up by three. Here's Aaron Branham. 
Over to Belcher. 310 left in the game. Belcher, nice move. He spins. Goes up. No good. Kelsey Friend up for the rebound. And Seth Kaiser will bring it up. Exactly three minutes left in the game. Shelby Valley leading it by three. Fleming floats it underneath for Friend. He's got it. Lays it up and in. 59-54. Shelby Valley by five. 2.45 left. Aaron Branham calling out the play. In the corner, Adkins. And they're going to get Ryan Tackett for the foul. It'll be his fifth. It's Eastridge in the double bonus. And back at the first, second player for Chevy Valley to foul out. Foul out. He and Philip Baker both out. And once again, both teams going to take advantage of this to uh, go to the sideline. Looks like Spears is going to come back in for Eastridge now. He's playing with four fouls, but they need him underneath. I tell you what, Kelsey's been killing them on those little dump passes down to the hole. Right, and uh, the times that Spears has been on the bench, they've uh, really taken advantage of their advantage inside by going to uh, Kelsey Friend. Two minutes, 38 seconds left on the clock. We're going to have Brandon Ratliff at the line. He'll be shooting two as it's a double bonus. First one good. 59-55. Brandon Ratliff, the only player on Eastridge, has not been to the foul line tonight in the ball game until now. Second one up. Rolls around and goes in. Friend gets it ahead to Patrick Tackett. In the corner to Travis Robinson, over to Friend. And going to get steps called on Kelsey Friend. Easter is trailing by three with the ball, 228 to go. What is this bar getting nerve-wracking or what? Just what we expected. That's what they've had all year when these two teams have met. Aaron Branham with it. Goes down on the baseline to Spears. He's double teamed. And Coach Hurley gets a timeout. It's a full timeout. 2.14 to go in the ballgame. Shelby Valley 59, Eastridge 56 on the Intermountain Sports Network. And welcome back to Eastridge High School. Only 2.14 left in the ballgame. Eastridge trailing by three with the ball. As Aaron Branham will inbound it for the Warriors. Brandon Rana for three. It's no good. Kelsey Friend pulls it down, and it's picked off. T.R. Atkins on the floor. Scramble for the ball. It's tied up. Possession goes to Shelby Valley. Stops the clock with 2.05 to go. Kaiser to inbound it against the full court pressure. Kaiser over to Friend, gets it to Tackett. Tackett ahead to Kaiser. Yeah. That was good. Double team now. He splits the double team. And Coach Rowe gets a timeout. Let's see if this is a full. It's a full timeout. We'll just keep it right here this time, Chuck. And uh, Talk a little bit about it here. As 150 left in the game. Shelby Valley leading by three with the ball. And this has been a good one. It has. So explain a little bit about the regional tournament next week. The opening round will be hosted by the district winners. Uh, whoever wins this game will uh, host the game Monday night. The drawing will be held uh, Saturday morning at Johnson Central High School. As always, a uh, district winner draws from the losers bracket and uh, we'll have four first round boys games Monday night at four different sites and the same thing Tuesday night with the girls all four district winners will uh, host the game on Tuesday night 
And then Wednesday night, the entire region will move to uh, Johnson Central High School, where we'll have uh, be down to the final four in both girls and boys. Wednesday night, I believe, will be boys action, a doubleheader. Thursday, uh, girls doubleheader. And then uh, Friday night, a boys championship game. And Saturday night, the girls championship. From All Johnson right. Central. But lots of basketball yet to come your way on your Intermountain Sports Network. We're ready to go. Kelsey Friend inbounds it in backcourt to Seth Kaiser. Kaiser setting up the offense. Tack it in the middle. Patrick Tack it. Out to Friend. Down to Fleming. Back to Friend. He finds Travis Robinson underneath. And Robinson puts it over the goal. He was wide open underneath and threw it completely over the goal. And we've got a foul on Shelby Valley. Uh-oh, that's Patrick Tackett's fifth. He's out of here as well, Ken. Tackett is gone now. And as I said earlier, this, this foul trouble is really hurting Shelby Valley. They played primarily uh, this entire year with a six-man rotation. And it's the third player to foul out. Eric Bartley checking in. As uh, Coach Rowe had already gotten Bartley off the bench, I think, to replace Travis Robinson, but uh, he's going to have to leave Robinson out there now. 135 left on the clock. Well, if East Ridge doesn't come back in this one, they sure can't say they didn't have the opportunity. Shelby Valley got into foul trouble, and uh, there's one of the reasons right there that East Ridge is not ahead in this ball game. They have not hit a high percentage of their free throw shots. Here's missed the first one, second one up. It's good. 59-57. Shelby Valley by two. In the friend. Friend gets it over to Kaiser. Down court to Barton. Back to Kaiser. Kaiser hits friend. Fleming drives with it. He's cut off. Puts it back to Kaiser. Kaiser in the corner to Robinson. Travis Robinson has it knocked loose. Got it over to Fleming. Underneath the friend. He throws it to Bartley. Bartley lost it. Friend chases it down out to Robinson, and he's fouled. Aaron Branham got him trying to steal the ball. Good hustle, but he missed the ball. Just a second one on there in Branham. And that's going to put Travis Robinson shooting one plus one. 106 left on the clock here in the ball game. Puts it up, and it comes off. Matt Belcher up for the rebound. Eastridge with a chance to tie or take the lead with a three. We're inside a minute to play. Aaron Bradham in the front court. Being patient. Now he floats it into Spears. Spears back to Bradham for three. He got it. Aaron Bradham. Gives East Ridge the lead, 60 to 59, and we've got a timeout. East Ridge, 37 seconds left in the ball game. The 30-second timeout, so we'll just keep it right here. But uh, quite an effort here by the Warriors as they come back to take the lead. Branham had had trouble shooting, and then he got in the second half here. This fourth quarter, he's had two trays. Yes, he's hit two big ones here in this fourth quarter. He's got 11, 11 points that. here in the second half. And just like their first two meetings, it's going to come down to the last shot, looks like, Chuck. Branham and Spears both with 11 points in the second half after only scoring a point or two in the first half. Three starters on the bench that have fouled out. Yeah, and that hurts a or team that doesn't rotate a lot of players. I mean, you know, if it was right. East Ridge or, you know, some of these other teams we've seen this year, like maybe South Floyd that runs 9, 10, 11 players out there, it doesn't hurt you as bad. Right. But when uh, you're Shelby Valley, you've got to put in kids that don't have a lot of game experience in in, in very tough situations. 
And here are the Wildcats. They're going to take a glance at the court. They trail by one. Kaiser over to Friend. I would almost bet they'd try to get that ball down low to Kelsey Friend because he's been hurting them all night down there in the block. And they got a 10 second count. As the Wildcats, not paying attention, don't get it across the timeline. Now Eastridge just has to be smart. Don't do something stupid. Don't throw the ball away. As they are having it mid-court with 29 seconds left. It's inbounded to Brandon Ratliff. Ratliff in back court, double team. He gets it across, down in the corner. Here's Spears with it. And I can't believe foul. the whistle didn't blow before that. They're going to send Spears to the line. He was triple teamed in the corner. They didn't want him coming out of there with it. Yes. Uh, we've got a timeout on the court with 17 seconds left on the clock. It's Eastridge 60, Shelby Valley 59. See the signal if it's a full or a 30. We want to take this time to thank our sponsors tonight. Absolutely. And we really appreciate these sponsors that have helped us bring you all these district games this week here from the 59th district. Appalachian Wireless, the law offices of Hanover Hall and Bartley, Dr. Michael McKinney of Minnie, Kentucky, Michael Methodist Hospital, Glenn Martin Hammond Law Office, Season's Inn, Motel and Restaurant, Keys, Family Owned Homes, Eagle Express, uh, Virgin, Kent Carter, and Mike Lucas, attorneys in law. Adventure Motorsports, your local Suzuki dealer, and Holland Jones Funeral Home of Virgin. Big thanks to all these fine sponsors. And I want to thank, thank all the folks here at East Ridge that have been so hospitable and helped us this week and taken good care of us. We sure appreciate all your uh, friendship and hospitality. We sure do. They've been Extremely nice to us up here and taking good care of us and almost drowned us tonight, Chuck. There was so many drinks up here. I've got a pop and two or three waters sitting in front of me. I don't know what to grab hold of first. As Aaron Branham will inbound it. He gets it in. And we're gonna have a foul. If they foul Brandon Ratliff, that's Eric Bartley committing the foul. Well, they got it into the hands of one of the guards who should be a pretty good free throw shooter. Uh, Shelby Valley definitely wanting to get the ball back. Uh, they can't tie this thing up or go ahead without the ball in their hands. They needed to foul Ratliff and give themselves some time to be on offense. Ratliff will have two shots. It's the double bonus. First one up and good. And this is a big one coming up here, Chuck, if he can force the Wildcats to uh, go for a three. They'll have to have a three-pointer if he hits this next one. Only 15 seconds left on the clock. Players are so fired up down there. The referee telling the Eastridge players to stay off the court and sit down until the game's over. And it's far from over, folks. We've seen a lot of things happen over the years now. I tell you what. Yeah, you know. Just remember that Kentucky LSU football game. Anything can happen in the last seconds of the ball game. <laughs> Round a second shot on the way, and it's good. 62-59. Kaiser drives, Bartley back to Kaiser. Kaiser takes it in, scores, and Shelby Valley calls a timeout, and I'll tell you, they really needed to try to put up a three there, Chuck. Only I guess up. what they're planning on doing is either fouling immediately or trying to get a steal on the inbounds. The uh, only thing on the foul is, uh, you know, if they don't get the steal, they're forced to foul. Only five seconds on the You don't have you much got, time to get back a, down the court. Right, you got a couple more seconds off the clock, and you're on the, the opposite end of the court shooting free throws. It's going to be extremely hard to get it back down the court and get off a good shot. But uh, great effort here tonight by Coach James Hurley and the East Red Warriors. And uh, here's an interesting fact, uh, Chuck.
subject that I learned this week. In the Chevy Valley's first year of being a high school, they won the 59th district tournament. Pike Central's first year of being a high school, they won the 60th district tournament. And it very much looks like East Ridge in their first year could win the district tournament. So, so being a first year school hasn't been a bad omen for the Pike County a, schools. Huh? It certainly hasn't. Matt Belcher to inbound it. Nobody guarding the out of bounds player. And Belcher runs the baseline, gets it into Rattler, and nobody can catch him. Finally, Seth Kaiser gets him, but it only leaves 2.3 seconds. And it looks like the Warriors may have this one wrapped up. Well, Brandon needs to just calm down, not get too heady, too excited. He needs to hit these free throws because Shelby Valley, you know, they could whip that ball down the court and Kaiser or Friend could launch a three. So they need to concentrate on these free throws before they start celebrating. And this first one's short. I'm sure Coach Rowe wishes they could play the NBA rules, call a timeout and get it at midcourt. Yeah. <laughs> That's not the rule in high school or college. And he gets the second one. And here's a long pass down court to Fleming. It's deflected. And the East Ridge Warriors have won the district tournament. 63-61 over the Shepherd Valley Wildcats. And they mop the floor. Congratulations to Coach James Hurley, Denny Paul May, their entire staff. The, uh, entire team as they worked really hard and uh, came away with the big win here. We're going to uh, take a short break here and we'll be back with uh, post-game festivities. Uh, be sure to stay tuned. We've got uh, both girls and boys uh, trophy presentations here. So we'll be right back here as Eastridge wins the 59th District Championship 63-61 over the Shelby Valley Wildcats on the Intermountain Sports Network. Okay, welcome back here to East Ridge. The exciting and thrilling uh, 59th District Tournament. East Ridge winning in the last few seconds, 63 to 61, over the defending regional champion Shelby Valley Wildcats. Ken Hall's down there at center court, but uh, he's trying to go through that mass of humanity and find some folks to talk at. And uh, we'll go ahead and give you some stats while Ken is uh, lining up some people to talk to down there on the floor. For Shelby Valley, they were led in scoring by Kelsey Friend, who had 21 points. Also in double figures was Paul Fleming. Phillip Akers had uh, uh, 11 points before fouling out. Fleming had 15. Um, as we said, Kelsey Friend with 21. Seth Kaiser had seven. Patrick Tackett with four before he fouled out. Ryan Tackett had three before he fouled out of the ball game. Eric Bartley came in, did not score, and uh, Travis Robinson had one point on a free throw. Shelby Valley 12 out of 19 from the foul line tonight. 31 rebounds and 12 turnovers, and they blocked five shots tonight. Those blocks all coming via Kelsey Friend's way. For East Ridge, they had four players in double figures. Brandon Ratliff finished up with 15 points, and his free throws in the fourth quarter helped uh, seal the deal. He was five out of six from the charity stripe late in the ball game. With 13 points, Aaron Branham, including two big three-pointers in the fourth period, uh, with um, 14 points, Matt Belcher, with 12, Robbie Spears, T.R. Atkins had six, Matt McCurry had two, and Brandon Bevins had one. Eastridge, 20 out of 35 from the charity stripe. They turned the ball over five times and pulled 29 rebounds, and they claim the 59th district title here after losing two games one of them in overtime during the regular season both by three points to Shelby Valley so these teams have been very tight and very competitive all year long so he's, I think Ken Hall's got coach Hurley down there we're going to go send it down to Ken Kentucky Ken and uh they just won't quit. They just don't know quit. They kept playing hard, kept playing hard. And these fans, they gone it. They wouldn't quit. They they stayed with us. We got down five or six. They wouldn't quit, and their guys rallied around them. 
Uh, Coach, I think you've done a great job this year uh, by blending this team together. Matt Belcher was a star, a uh, top scorer at Feds Creek. Brandon Rattler from Elkhorn, uh, Robbie Spears at Millard, and these guys have all sacrificed something to make a team, haven't they? They have. They've each sacrificed a lot. Today was their 277th day together since June 3rd that we started. And, uh, 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 you know, gosh, like you said, Ken, they could have been selfish. They could have went their own ways. Those six seniors could have done a lot of different things besides buying the East Ridge basketball. I give my hats off to Rodney Rowe. He's to me, he's one of the best coaches in East Kentucky. And it's a joy for me to get to coach against him and his players. They're, they're fine young gentlemen. He runs a class program. Their kids are class. I think our kids are class. I thought it's great for East Kentuckians and East Kentucky basketball. Oh, this is just a tremendous atmosphere up, up here. Uh, the fans for both, both sides, uh, great fans, and just a very exciting night. And uh, how do you feel about the regional tournament now? Uh, going in as a winner helps because uh, we get a home court. I think that's important for all four teams. We'll go down in the morning at 10 o'clock and find out, uh, you know, who we draw and, and how it's going to go. It certainly helps, like I said, to be a winner. But you got to play. There's eight good teams in there. And eight good teams, uh, anybody can beat anybody. And uh, there's good coaches, good players, and it's just fun. Well, Coach, I'm going to let you go celebrate with your team here and get these trophies, but congratulations. Thanks. We appreciate you guys. And we're going to send it back up to Chuck Scoble. Thanks so much, Ken Hall, and we'll hang out here for the trophy presentations. Of course, the girls champion Shelby Valley Wildcats cutting down the nets on one end, and uh, East Ridge boys will be cutting down the nets on the other end of the floor. See, Nancy Casey, uh, Kenneth O'Quinn, uh, Mr. Kilgore, the principal here at East Ridge, all going to be presenting the trophies out to the uh, different teams. And I think they will also have some cheerleading awards probably coming out as well. Folks, let's give these sponsors who made this thing possible a great round of applause. And now the presentation of awards. First, for the academic awards. From East Ridge, girls cheerleader, Shandy Barrowman. Girls basketball, Sarah Anderson. And for boys basketball, player Matthew Belcher.
for Blackville. Boys cheerleader, Christina Davis. Girls basketball player, Kalia Evans. Kalia Evans, correction. Kalia Evans, correction. And boys basketball player, Josh Jones. For Shelby Valley, girls cheerleader, Kayla Mellons. Boys cheerleader, Samantha Childers. Girls basketball player, Christy Taylor. And boys basketball, Eric Bartley. Leaders girls, girls basketball. Yeah. No, right here. This girl's uh, cheerleader. Yeah, girls, girls cheerleader. They went no name there. Okay. I don't know if they were. Nope. Sure not. You want me to keep going? And now for the cheerleading trophies. First for girls cheerleading. The girl runner-up in cheerleading is Eastridge. And the winner in girls cheerleading is Pikeville White. <laughs> and now for boys cheerleading. The boys cheerleader runner-up is the Shelby Valley Wildcats. We'll go back and get this right here for um, for Pitebull. Uh, it was um, Bridget Walsh. Girls Walsh, yeah. back up and correct the mistake here. An academic award from Pikeville High School for Girls Parks and Cheerleader was Bridget Walsh. Sorry about that, Bridget. And now the boys cheerleader winner. This year's winner is Pikeville Maroon.
and now 14 free throw. <coughs> For the girls, team free throw, the winner is the Shelby Valley Lady Wildcats. The team free throw for boys is the Pikeville Panthers. And now for the girls' winner. This year's girls' winner of the 59th District Tournament is the Shelby Valley Lady Wildcats.
now, the winner of this year's Boys 59th District Tournament, your Pressensburg, Phelps, or Johnson Central.